Welcome to Counters. We're going to be looking at debits and credits, but specifically some practice questions which will help you cement what you would have already learned from our other videos. And specifically, accounting for beginners part one and part two. Those ones are very critical in understanding your debits and your credits and understanding specific accounts, what you debit and what you credit. And so this one here will help you gauge how much of that you have understood. So if you haven't checked those lessons out yet, you will find them in the links in the description below otherwise if you have or you know your debits and your credits and you'd like to just check how well you've understood it then you can check out this lesson and so you can see here the requirement is just to look at the transaction and determine what account is debited and what account is credited and so we asked here for each of the transactions below provide only the relevant name of the account in the general ledger that would be debited and credited amounts are not required that may be ignored so we're going to look at each specific transaction now if you have looked at our lesson on accounting for beginners part one and part two but specifically part one really then what you want to do is to pause the video here attempt to do it on your own go through all these transactions and try and determine what account is debited and what account is credited and then once you're done you can press play and then mark yourself and see how well you have done as we always say you'll do much better than just following along so what accounts do we debit what accounts do we credit and how do we know well if you look at the lesson accounting for beginners part one you know the acronym that we always use dead click okay dead click and so if this is your first time looking at debits and your credits what is dead click well dead click is an acronym that we use to remember what accounts are debited and what accounts are credited. So here it is for your memory. Dead, the D there is debit. And what are we debiting? We're debiting expenses, assets, and drawings. And for click, it's credit. What are we crediting? Liabilities, income, and capital. And so you will see as we go through these transactions how we are able to use this acronym in answering questions such as this. So let's go through them one by one. I hope you've attempted the question and you're just marking yourself here and you'll see that you'll be in a much better position because you'll be able to know what mistakes you've made and chances are you're unlikely to make the same mistake again if you've attempted it before watching the video or for whatever you got correct, you will likely get it correct again if you were to find it in a paper, for instance. Otherwise, if you just want to learn this for accounting purposes or you want to prepare financials and you need to know your debits and your credits then this is for you and what you'll see here is that they've given us an example right wages payable 5000 rand what is our debit and what is our credit you can see they put the debit as wages expense and they credited accrued expenses why is that well we know that wages expenses is an expense whenever we have an expense we debit it as with the acronym here, we debit expenses, all right? And that's why wages expenses debited. But what is credited? Accrued expenses, okay? Why is it accrued expenses? Firstly, what is accrued expenses? Accrued expenses is an expense that you have incurred, but you've not paid as yet. If you'd like to understand more on this, on accrual specifically, check out our lesson on accounting for beginners part four. You'll find it in the link in the description below where we'll look at what accruals are and we'll go through some examples which will be very clear for you. But in a nutshell, accrued expenses is an expense we have incurred but we have not paid as yet as I've just mentioned. That means it's a liability. We still owe that money because we've already incurred the expense. And so what do we do with liabilities? We credit liabilities whenever we incur it. As with the acronym again, we credit liabilities and that's why accrued expenses is on the credit side. So you can put the credit as accrued expenses or wages payable because by putting wages payable, you know that it's an accrued expense already. And how did we know that it's an accrued expense or how did we know that we have not paid it as yet? Well, because of the word payable, all right? Whenever you see payable, it means that it's not been paid as yet and that would be a liability. I hope that's clear and hope you understand the example that was given here. Now let's look at these scenarios. Hope you attempted them. Number one, bank charges paid 500 rand. What do we do here? Well, what is bank charges? Bank charges is an expense account. So I'm sure you already know what to do with bank charges. We're going to debit bank charges because we debit our expenses whenever we incur it. And what did we do with bank charges? Do we owe the bank charges or did we pay it? Well, we're told that we paid 500 rand. Whenever you pay for something, you know that bank is involved. That means if you're paying for it, it means that it's decreasing bank. And what is bank? Bank is an asset account. 
if it's decreasing we put it on the opposite side which is the credit side so we're going to credit bank and you can see here our acronym we debit our assets all right and bank is an asset but if we are paying out money that means our bank is decreasing we put it on the opposite side which is the credit side so we're going to credit bank hope that was clear enough next one outstanding deposit identified on bank statement not reflected in the business's books 5000 rand for rent income what is happening here well we had an outstanding deposit that we we're expecting and it was identified on the bank statement but we have not updated it on our books as yet so we need to update it so what are we going to do well we're going to debit bank because money came into our account it's a deposit okay so we're debiting bank because bank is an asset again it increases on the debit side and if money is coming in we debit bank always if money is going out we credit bank as we did with the previous example so we're going to debit bank and what are we going to credit here we're going to credit rent income that was easy enough why rent income because we've just earned an income we credit our income whenever we've earned it and you can see here with the acronym we credit income okay you can see here income and that's how beneficial this acronym is you can use it for any scenario with your debits and your credits let's look at the next one accrued interest on fixed deposit 210 rand okay so accrued interest meaning that interest that has not been paid for as yet and it's on a fixed deposit remember whenever you see fixed deposit we are the ones who are putting money into the bank as a fixed deposit or we are investing our money into a fixed deposit account that means we have earned an interest of 210 rand but we have not been paid that interest yet how do i know that because of the word accrued the word accrued by the way you can replace it with the word outstanding okay or not paid for yet you can understand it in that manner just like the example we're given here remember accrued expenses meaning outstanding expenses meaning expenses not paid for yet that means for our interest here we have earned the interest of 210 rand but we've not been paid that money yet what do we call that that is an accrued income okay or interest receivable you can use any of those words here and you'll put it on the debit side accrued income what is our accrued income accrued income is an income that we have earned but we have not received the money yet that means it's an asset okay because we're owed that money that money belongs to us we have not received it as yet we are owed that money we put it on the debit side because it's increasing our assets and what are we going to credit well that's easy we're going to credit interest income because we credit our income whenever we earn it and so that's what we're going to do here next one interest charged on debtors overdue account 250 rand all right so whenever interest is charged obviously someone owes interest but who is it is it us who owe interest or are we owed interest by our customer well you need to understand the word debtor what is a debtor a debtor is someone to whom we sold on credit and they now owe us money so when interest is charged to a debtor it means we are charging one of our customers who owes us money interest because they've not paid their account on time as it states here overdue account 250 rand so what are we going to debit we're going to debit debtors or trade receivables so those terms are usually used interchangeably debtors or trade receivables and why are we debiting it well because debtors are people who owe us money anyone who owes us money is an asset to us because that money belongs to us we have not received it as yet that's an asset so we're going to debit debtors and what are we going to credit we're going to credit interest income because it's interest that we've just charged that means we have earned that interest and why do we debit debtors by the way because it's increasing how much money we are owed by our customers all right whenever we charge them interest we're increasing how much they actually owe us next prepaid expenses telephone 300 rand again prepaid expenses that is an accrual remember accruals accounting for beginners part four you'll understand more on that but what is prepaid expenses well prepaid expenses is an expense that we have paid for in advance we have not incurred the expenses yet but we've paid for it in advance that's why prepaid okay we've paid for it in advance and what does that mean that means that the money that we've paid out in advance even though we have not incurred the expense yet still belongs to us all right that money still belongs to us because we have not incurred the expenses yet and so if the money still belongs to us it is an asset okay so you can clearly see here that any money that belongs to us that we don't have with us as yet that is always an asset whether that is prepaid expenses or that is accrued income money that is owed to us by our customers that we have earned all right that is money that belongs to us or debtors money that belongs to us that is not to us as yet we consider it an asset even fixed deposit is also an asset okay money that we don't have but we know it belongs to us 
it's lying somewhere that is an asset and so prepaid expenses is an asset we've paid for telephone we've not used the service as yet okay that's why it's called prepaid expense we paid for it in advance so we debit our prepaid expense because prepaid expense is an asset and what are we going to credit well here you have to be careful what did we do here we just paid for telephone in advance so we are crediting bank okay so we debit prepaid expense and we credit bank now an important thing to mention here sometimes they'll give you a scenario such as this and they tell you that you must correct the error meaning that they may have recorded telephone as an expense by mistake only to later realize that it was actually paid for in advance meaning we paid for it in advance that means it was not supposed to be an expense that is when we would debit prepared expenses and credit telephone expense why is that because we'd be reversing the error that's if we were told that it was an error which was made and it was recorded as telephone expense okay that's when we would reverse it but that's not what we're told here but you just have to bear that in mind when looking at the scenario like this the next one rent income received in advance for the next financial year 8000 rand what do we debit what do we credit well we received money what does that mean it means we are going to debit bank and so that's easy enough whenever you receive money you will always debit bank regardless of where the money is coming from and what it is for and so that's what we're going to do here why is that because bank is an asset again assets increase on the debit side as with our acronym and then what do we credit well we're going to credit income received in advance or rent received in advance otherwise known as unearned revenue okay why do we credit that term well income received in advance is money that we have received but it doesn't belong to us yet because we have not earned that money like it says here rent income received in advance meaning we've been paid for rent but the person has not stayed on the property to incur that expense as yet so that money still belongs to them and that's why we're crediting it because it's still a liability that money is a liability so we credit income received in advance or rent received in advance or unearned revenue those are different terms that may be used there again with this one here disclaimer if they tell you that you need to correct an error where they may have recorded it as rent income as opposed to rent received in advance then you would have to credit rent received in advance or income received in advance and debit rent income to reverse the error if you'd like to understand more on correction of errors although we're not dealing with that here but it's definitely a scenario to look out for especially when you're doing your post adjustment trial balances or when you're doing your annual financial statements where they give you pre-adjustment trial balances and they tell you some errors were made you will find a lesson on the suspense account and correction of errors in the link in the description below as well but that's just to prepare you and for you to read the information that you are given carefully okay but this one is easy enough to know what we need to do Next one, depreciation on vehicles for the year 1,200 Rand. What do we do with that? Well, what is depreciation? Depreciation is an expense, right? The loss in value of our asset in this particular financial year. And so what are we going to debit? We're going to debit depreciation because it's an expense that you have incurred. So we debit depreciation. And what are we going to credit? We're going to credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Okay, accumulated depreciation on vehicles. And that's exactly how you do it. Whenever you incur depreciation, you debit your depreciation and you credit your accumulated depreciation on vehicles. What is accumulated depreciation? Accumulated depreciation is the loss in value of our assets since the day that we bought it. And so whenever we incur depreciation, we are adding it to the accumulated depreciation. And by the way, accumulated depreciation is what is called negative asset account, meaning it's an asset but we're not debiting the asset we are crediting it because it's reducing the value of our asset okay that's what a negative asset account is but whenever you have to do your journals for depreciation you always debit your depreciation and you credit your accumulated depreciation and indicate what class of asset it is in this case it's vehicles that's why we write it as accumulated depreciation vehicles okay next one interest on capital for partners tom and jerry tom earned an interest of eighteen thousand rand and jerry earned an interest of thirteen thousand two hundred rand what do we do with that well, we're going to debit interest on capital because we as a company or the partnership is incurring the interest. That's why it's debiting interest on capital. And of course, we're going to allocate them for Tom and for Jerry. And what are we going to credit? We're going to credit capital. Okay, why are we crediting capital? Well, you can see here, capital is credited. So it goes into their capital account. Okay, because it's interest on the capital that they have in the business. All right, the interest on capital here is an expense. That's why we are debiting it. Next, annual salary to be recorded in the current account of partner Tom, 30,000 Rand. Remember, 
whenever we have to pay salaries that's an expense account we debit the expense account so we debit salary and what are we going to credit here well we're going to credit the current account for tom specifically so current account tom is credited and remember this is basically a partnership journal entry all right if it was a normal journal entry for a company or for an individual or whatever the case may be you would debit salary and credit bank if they told you that you paid out the money from the bank account okay remember whenever we pay out money we always credit our bank account last one close off tax to appropriation account for a close corporation what do we do here well closing off the income tax account we know that the income tax is an expense account we put the expense on the debit side but whenever we close it off we put it on the credit side and we're closing it off to the appropriation account so what are we going to do we're going to debit our appropriation account okay because whenever we close off an expense to an appropriation account we will always debit an appropriation account and then that expense we put it on the credit side so we're going to credit our income tax Okay, that's what you do. If it were an income that you have to close off, you're going to debit the income account. Okay, you're putting it on the opposite side and then you're creating the appropriation account. But for the expense, this is how you would do it. Okay, this is how you handle your journal entries, what you debit and what you credit. Of course, they told us we only need to put the relevant name of the account and not put the amounts here. But if you understand this, if you understand the acronym, you will know how to apply it and it will make your work easier whenever you have to do your debits and your credit or whenever you have to do your trial balance or even when you're doing your statement of financial position, otherwise known as the balance sheet. You know what your debit and your credit is, you know what increases away. It will put you in a better position in, in terms of accounting. I hope it has made sense. I hope you've gained value from this lesson. If you have learned something, please consider subscribing to our channel, like this video and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.